Hi everyone, it's me Marcus. Um, today, I'm, tonight I'm going to be talking to you a little bit about the uh, colour theory and complementary colours. I have my notes in front of me. It's actually one of the beauty books that I've got. Um, I won't show you because, you know, because I want the companies to make money from, from this book and I don't want to show you what it looks like just in case the sales get lower. Um so this um so I'm wearing pink today. I know it's probably not the best colour on me. Uh but uh there are colours um first of all there are the three primary colours. There's red, blue and yellow. Um and when two of those colours are mixed together they make a secondary colour. For example um Red and yellow make orange, blue and yellow make green, blue and red make purple. So, and they are the secondary colours that they make up. Um, and there is also the colour wheel. It's, um, they use the, um, so there's a phrase that goes, Richard of York gave battle in in vain. So there is red, yellow, orange, green, blue, and violet. Oh, and indigo. Seven. Uh, and on a colour wheel, there is red. And that's always and that's opposite green, red and green. They are complementary colors. The blue and orange, they are opposite each other, complementary colors. And we have purple and yellow, which are also complementary colors. Um, an example of where those colors are used. So we would have. So if your hair was to copper, for instance, you would use, um, let's have a look, more ash tones, which are blue, and they will neutralise those, you know, if your hair is too orange or copper, it'll neutralise into more of a brown, it says more of a brown, uh, natural kind of colour. Okay, I'm switch hands because of me. Um, is aching. I should really have a better rest or something or a camera which I can film with. Um, hopefully this is a flattering light and I have just done me nighttime skincare routine. Um, so we have, yes, we have that. Uh, so I think blue is used more in hair care than in uh, makeup. So, sorry, hair colour. And makeup. Uh, we have lilac which covers up any sallow skin because sallow skin is yellow and the purple will neutralize that. Although when I first started doing makeup by accident I put on lilac concealer under my eyes. <laughs> hey God, I was such a clot. <laughs> um, such a, oh dear me. Um, and purple can also be used on hair. Uh, sorry, violet can also be used on hair to neutralise yellow tones. Uh, some parts of my hair are silverish and some are like yellow. You might be able to make it out. I've got like a golden roof going on with some silver ends. I just kind of like it. <laughs> Although I was thinking about going a, like a dark blonde. You Note your opinion, respectful opinions down in the comment section below or on Instagram, whichever you like. I'll put my Instagram in the details below in the description box. Um, <clears throat> so, for hair, you would have they call it silver or burgundy tones for violet, and for yellow tones, they call them gold. So, if your hair's too gold, they'll put silver in silver tones or burgundy tones in, and that'll neutralize the hair color a bit like this. Because I was going for a platinum blonde look. 
although I wasn't sure if it made me look older. I'm not even, I'm not really sure. But I have been told that I suit blonde hair. That's just what other people have told me. Um, and another example of makeup is green and red. So if you have redness, and I know I get redness, but I don't use a green primer or, con or corrector, you can cover up the redness with the green corrector and it will neutralise the redness. Uh, I think one example of how orange can sort of be used on uh, blue is when you have, you know, like uh, dark circles under your eyes and I know I do. Uh, you can use it like a pink or a peach colour or even a coral colour. If you, it depends on your skin tone. Uh, I think darker, for darker colour skin, dark, for darker toned skin, you'd use more of a, a coral colour to cover the dark circles. But if you're someone like me, you'd use pink. Something that's more, um, more tailored towards fair colouring. Um, and you'd use yellow to cover up any purple tones. I think I have blue and purple tones under my eyes. Um, another thing to think about is when complementary colours are next to each other. Like, uh, for example, this, no, actually this one, these are, this is green and red, although it might look orange against that, I'm not sure. Uh, I'll hold them both up. Um, so, the green and red, can you see how much they stand out next to each other? You know, it's a bit like when you see, like, a tomato with a, red, with a gr like, green stem or something, or roses with green stems. There's also, like, a crocus, like, it has a purple, you can get purple crocuses, and they've got yellow for the for the, uh, what do they call it? You know, the bit where you collect pollen from, anyway. <laughs> I'm not very, I can't, I can't remember the scientific term for it. But, um, the way you get the pollen from is yellow. And it really stands out against the purple. Um, blue and orange together. It's a bit like, in the sea, you know, like, if someone gets, um, lost at sea, or they get, or they need help. Uh, or, you know, the, for their inflatable, what do you call them? Uh, life jackets. They're orange because in the sea, it's blue. So blue and orange, the orange would stand out more. So the person who needs to be rescued will be seen more easily. I think that's what the idea is. Anyhow, that's the complementary colour information. Yeah. And another example uh, of complementary uh, colours being used is like today I was wearing a red, like sorry, a green eyeshadow, and I could have and that, but the problem is is that I don't suit this. Is a red lipstick. Um. Red and green will stand out next to each other, so you know it's it's good for a Christmas look. Um. I have used like purple on the top and some yellow below there before. Um, because you can use complementary colours to make makeup look more exciting. That's another thing. Another example is this nail here. You've got purple and gold. It's not very good in this lighting, I know. But, um, can you see how they stand out next to each other? Um, I like to use complementary colours as well. Um, use them every day. Use them every day without realising. Oh yes. And uh, eye colour as well. If you use like copper on your eyes, it'll make your eye colour stand out more. Um, my eye colour is blue. Not that you can tell that much in this lighting, but... Um, you could certainly tell the dark circles there, couldn't you? Maybe even the wrinkles. But anyhow, um, 
uh, yes. Th there was also the matter of like copper on the eyes to make the blue eyes stand out more. You can use blue to make brown eyes stand out more. Um, I think you can use green to make blue eyes stand out more. And I need green because I don't suit... I can use like a bronze or something like that. But I, you know, like not like a bright copper on my eyes because I'm fair. And if I use anything that's too bright, it makes me look washed out. So I need something that has more neutral tones to it. Even the green has to be neutralised with a depth of brown here and here. That's what I did today. Um, and yeah, um, if your hazel eyes have more of a warm tone to them, like more... Um, more brown or more like amber coloured green you know if it's more like that then you'd use like a blue uh, to make it stand out more but I think if they have um, more of a, a blue tone to them I think you'd use more of a neutral colour or something like that um, anyway th this will be a, like a tutorial-ish of the uh, complement of the colour theory because I am not a teacher. I think you probably know that by now if you're a subscriber of mine. Um, yesterday I did my mum's makeup and I um, I think she also incorporated the um, the idea of the green eyeshadow with the red lipstick but she wanted to use her own because my, the lipstick that I used didn't uh, it didn't last very long. I think she used the Maybelline Superstay one and I'll take a word for it that it lasted all day but for me it was a bit dry and I think my lips just a bit you know a bit sensitive to lipsticks and things like that and it wasn't my colour anyway because on me it looked a bit pinkish and it looked a bit bright because my skin I think I've got a soft colouring oh yeah that's another thing soft and bright colouring um, so if you have a soft colour in it means you have more grey toned skin. If you have more brighter coloured skin it means your skin hasn't got greys and it's more saturated. So I suit more um, more grey coloured things or pastel colours. So if I wear something like a neon green I look totally washed out. I will look so, I would look sick. But someone who has a bright colouring would just be able to get away with them. Like if my skin was more white, I probably might be able to get away with them. But because I've got more neutral tones to me, I wouldn't be able to get away with them. I can barely get away with this. And these. <laughs> but I go against the grain like that. <laughs> oh yes, guys, I should mention that I also have playlists in my channel. If you look... um. There's one for skincare, one for makeup, um, well, anyway, there are playlists in there and I'm sure they'll be able to explain it for themselves. I can't remember what the playlist looks like right now, but they are there. Uh, if you do, if you like this video, please subscribe, give a thumbs up and leave a respectful comment. Any bad comments, cut off. Thank you for watching this guys. I hope this has taught you something valuable um, and I hope it has been educational for you in some way. Even though I'm not qualified to teach you, it is good to know that I can maybe mentor somebody, you know. Anyway, thank you for watching guys. I'll see you very soon. Bye!